Ever wondered how computers communicate with each other? Just as we humans have languages and rules for interaction, computers too have their own way of chatting. This digital chit chat happens through something known as computer protocols. These are not just any rules, but meticulously designed standards that allow computers to connect and transmit data to each other. Imagine a world where computers speak different languages. Chaos, right? That's where computer protocols come in, ensuring a smooth conversation between computers irrespective of their make or model. They are the unsung heroes that keep our digital world moving, enabling everything from your morning weather updates to your late night movie streaming. So in other words, protocols in computer systems define a set of rules or conventions that govern the communication and interaction between systems or devices within a network. These protocols ensure that different components or systems can understand and interpret information consistently. Here's a basic overview of how protocols work in computer systems. Number one, standardization. Protocols are established through a process of standardization, often by organizing organizations such as the Internet Engineering Task Force or IETF or the International Organization for Standardization or ISO. These standards define the format, sequence and behavior of messages exchanged between systems. Number two, layered architecture. Protocols are often organized into layers following the OSI or Open Systems Interconnection Model or the TCP IP model. Each layer has a specific responsibility and protocols within each layer handle different aspects of communication. Number three, communication initiation. When two devices or systems want to communicate, they must agree on a common protocol. This involves negotiating parameters such as data format, encryption methods, and other settings. Number four, message formatting. Protocols define how data should be formatted for transmission. This includes specifying structure of messages, the order of data elements, and any necessary control information. Number five, addressing. Protocols provide a means of addressing and identifying devices within a network. This ensures that messages are delivered to the correct destination. Number six, error handling. Many protocols include mechanisms for error detection and correction. This helps ensure the integrity of data during transmission. Number seven, flow control. Protocols may implement flow control mechanisms to manage the rate at which data is sent, preventing congestion and ensuring efficient communication. Number eight, acknowledgement and handshaking. Protocols Protocols often include methods for acknowledging the receipt of data and establishing a connection. This is crucial for reliable and orderly communication. Number nine, security. Some protocols incorporate security features such as encryption and authentication to protect data from unauthorized access or tampering. Number 10, application layer integration. Protocols operate at different layers of the OSI model. The application layer protocols are specific to the type of application, for example, HTTP for web browsing. These protocols rely on lower level protocols to ensure end-to-end -end communication. So protocols are the foundation of any network communication that we just saw and there are many of them. However, one of them stands out in its significance and use which is the TCP slash IP model. Now, the TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol slash Internet Protocol and it is a suite of communication protocols used to interconnect de network devices on the internet. The the TCP IP model is a set of rules that governs how data is sent and received over the internet. At its heart, it's a framework consisting of four distinct layers, each with a specific role in the data transmission process. First up, we have the network interface layer. It's the foundation dealing directly with the hardware and raw data. Next, we find the internet layer. This layer is all about routing, helping data packets find their way across the vast internet landscape. Moving up, we meet the transport layer. Its job is to ensure data delivery is reliable, handling things like error checking and packet reordering. Finally, at the top, we have the application layer. This is where human computer interaction comes in and it's responsible for processing application specific functions. The TCP IP models four layers each play a 
crucial role in how data is transferred over the internet. Let's dive into these layers to understand their significance in detail. Firstly, we have the network interface layer. This is the lowest layer of the TCP IP model and is chiefly responsible for the physical transmission of data. It's all about how data moves from one device to another, whether it's through Ethernet cables, Wi-Fi signals, or even satellite links. It's a layer that deals with the nitty-gritty of hardware and physical network infrastructure. Moving up, we reach the internet layer. This layer is the postman of the internet, responsible for routing data packets. It's like a GPS system, figuring out the best route for data to travel from the source to the destination. Key protocols operating at this layer include the Internet Protocol or IP, which assigns unique addresses to each device on the network, and the Internet Control Message Protocol or ICMP, which handles errors and exchanges information about network conditions. Next up is the transport layer. This layer is all about ensuring reliable transmission of data. It's like a quality control manager checking that all data arrives safely at its destination and in the correct order. Protocols like the Transmission Control Protocol or TCP and the User Datagram Protocol or UDP operate at this layer. TCP ensures reliable delivery through a system of acknowledgements and retransmissions, while UDP provides a faster but less reliable service. Finally, at the top, we have the application layer. This is the layer that interfaces with software applications. It's like the customer service desk, translating your requests into a language the network can understand and vice versa. Protocols like the Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP, which powers the web, and the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol or SM. MTP, which enables email, operate at this layer. As you can see, each layer of the TCP IP model has a unique and essential role. How does this model compare to the others like the OSI model? While the TCP IP model is widely used, another model called the OSI model also exists. Now you might be wondering, how do these two models compare? Although the OSI model has seven layers compared to TCP IP's four, they essentially perform similar functions. Think of it like a sandwich. The OSI model may have more layers like a club sandwich, while the TCP IP model is more like a classic BLT. But at the end of the day, both sandwiches serve the same purpose, to satisfy your hunger. Now, where are these models implemented? The TCP IP model is the backbone of internet communications. It's like the air we breathe in the digital world. On the other hand, the OSI model is often used in teaching and documentation, providing a comprehensive framework for understanding network work interactions. In the world of computer communication, both the TCP IP and OSI models play vital roles. Understanding them helps us appreciate the complex process that enable our daily internet usage. So we saw that protocols serve as a set of rules that enable seamless communication between different components in a computer system or across a network. They provide a standardized framework that allows devices and systems from different manufacturers to interoperate effectively. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and ring that bell icon. Until next time, thank you so much and take care of yourself.